Hi, welcome to ECNG TD23, Intro to Software Engineering, where I'm going to discuss the waterfall model, um, which is the granddaddy of all life cycle models. Um, although this model has lots of problems, it serves as the basis for other, well, more efficient um, life cycle models. The, in this model, the project progresses through an orderly sequence of steps from the initial software concept through system testing. Um, the project holds a review at the end of each phase to determine whether it is ready to advance in the next phase, for example from requirements to design. Um, if the review determines the project is not ready to move to the next phase, it stays in the current phase until ready. Now, um, want you to get accustomed to something, um, s when you move from textbook to textbook, you may notice that these phases are a little bit different. Um, so, uh, sometimes people put more or less detail into uh, the steps of the waterfall model for for example in design sometimes they write out that there's an architectural conceptual design followed by a detailed or technical design um, or they may say for test they may talk about the unit testing then integration testing then system testing so you know you, it expands or contracts depending on how people think about the um, particular phases that it goes through um, but in general, these are the uh, general steps that it undertakes. Um, the first thing you have to understand about the waterfall model, it is very document driven. That means that the main work um, that they carry out from phase to phase are documents. And these documents are necessary to move from one phase to another. Um, so you have to understand that the phases are discontinuous. That means they don't overlap, right? Um, <coughs> the pure waterfall model performs well for product cycles in which you have a very stable product definition and when you're working with very well understood technical methodologies. So in those cases, the waterfall model helps you to find errors in the early low cost stages of a project. It provides the requirement stability that many developers crave. Yeah, we, we like to know what we're, we're, we're building. If you're building a well-defined maintenance release for an existing product or you're doing something like porting an existing product to a new platform, the waterfall cycle might be the right choice for you. Um, the pure waterfall model, it helps to minimize planning overhead because you can do all the planning up front. It doesn't provide tangible results in the form of software until the end of this life cycle. But to someone who's familiar with it, the documentation it generates provides usually meaningful indications of progress through um, the life cycle. Uh, so it works well for projects that are well understood but um, complex because you can benefit from tackling complexity in an orderly way. Uh, so it works well when quality requirements um, they, when the quality requirements dominate cost and schedule requirements. Uh, elimination of midstream changes eliminates a huge and well common source of potential errors. The waterfall model works especially well if you have technically weak staff or if you have an in inexperienced staff. This is because it provides the project with a structure that helps to minimize the wasted effort. Now on the disadvantage of your pure waterfall model, uh, these arise from the difficulty of fully specifying requirements at the beginning of the project, uh, before any design work has been done and before any code has been written. All right, to Let's see if I can help illustrate this. We as developers, we complain about users who don't know what they want, right? But suppose you're... Let, let, let's switch your roles, right? Imagine you had to specify in detail how you're going to make a car that you want to an automotive engineer. So you go to the engineer and you say, well, okay, I want an engine, body, window, steering wheel, um, X pedal, brake pedal, emergency brake, seats, all this sort of thing, right? So but you know a car is a very complex thing so are you going to remember everything that an automotive engineer will need to know to build your car so suppose you forget to specify that you need backup lights that turn on when you um, put the car in reverse the engineer goes away for six months returns with a car with no backup lights so then you turn to him and are like well you know I kind of forgot to specify that the car needs backup lights that turn on when I put the car into reverse uh, at that point, you will probably get kind of mad and you will be like, you know, do you actually know what it's going to cost to take to take, it's going to cost to take the car apart to connect the wiring from the transmission to the rear of the car? You have to redesign the rear panel on the car, 
putting new wiring for the brake lights, added another sensor to the transmission. A change like that will take weeks or even months. Why didn't tell me that in the first place, right? And you, of course, will be thinking, but you know, that really sounded like a simple request. You know, you think of all the steps that it would take in order to make that change, right? And that's usually because, uh, you know, you don't understand um, all, all of the complexities that's within a car because you're an amateur in that space. So, yeah, now getting back to software, a lot of software products are complicated too. And the people who are given the task to specify software are often not computer experts. They could forget things that seem simple to them until they see the working products. So if you're using a waterfall model, in that case, um, forgetting something can be a very costly mistake. Uh, you don't find out till, until you get down to system testing that one of the requirements was missing or wrong. And that's the major problem uh, with the waterfall model. It's not a flexible thing. You have to fully specify the requirements at the beginning of the, product, uh, of the project, which may be months or years before you have any working software, depending on the complexity of the project. And that, um, that seems uh, to fly in the face of um, modern business needs. Um, so, uh, some people have also criticized the waterfall model for not um, allowing you to back up and correct your mistakes. That's not quite right. Sometimes people don't understand that the waterfall model does allow you to go back and do things that came from before. The problem is that um, it's more difficult. So here's another take on the waterfall model, um, which kind of gives you the idea that you know you could swim upstream, swim up the waterfall just like a salmon, and um, that's usually a difficult thing to do, right? So let's imagine at the end of the architectural design, you participated in several major events that declare that you were done with that phase, right? The major events might include like you held a design review. You signed off on the official copy of the architecture document. You know, that those are things that take a lot of time. And if you discover a flaw in the architecture while you're coding and debugging, um, it's awkward to go back to what you were doing and retrofit the architecture. Because that would mean a lot of changes to the existing documentation that you would have produced. Um, the waterfall lifecycle model has other weaknesses. Um, some tools, methods, and activities span waterfall phases. Those activities are difficult to accommodate in the waterfall's model disjoint phases for a rapid development project. Um, the waterfall model can prescribe an excessive amount of documentation. So if you're trying to retain flexibility, updating the specification can become, well, that's a job unto itself. The waterfall model generates few visible signs of progress until the very end. So from a customer's point of view, it will create a perception of slow development, which is not always the case. Um, a customer likes to have tangible assurances that the, their projects will be delivered on time. So in summary, the pure waterfall model's weakness often make it as poorly suited for rapid development projects. Even in cases where the uh, pure waterfall model strengths outweigh weaknesses, um, what I'll discuss in some later videos, um, the modified waterfall models can probably better work. Okay, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.